Okay. I'm back. I'm going to try to uh, connect, finally make a request across uh, to the database from Haskell. I did about an hour of streaming this morning that was um, silent with no talking because uh, my family wasn't awake yet and I didn't want to, uh, to wake everybody up. I'm not sure I'm going to post that to, uh, to YouTube. I don't know if the, I don't think the silent videos necessarily create very good content because it's not always clear what I'm doing or, or what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. Um, but I did ask ChatGPT to write me a, a comedy scene, which it did okay at um, while things were compiling. Actually, now that I think about it, what I'll do is I'll stick the silent stream uh, from earlier today at the end of this one so that folks who are not interested can just uh, close the video and anyone who is interested can can watch that bit as well. Um, okay, so uh, uh, um, there's some uh, failing stuff here. Parse error. Okay, that's, that's, there's must be some syntax thing here. Um, is it because I don't have like the right white space or is my function wrong? Let's just try adding a space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm missing a double colon here, right? That would do it. All right. It didn't like that either. Import op parse applicative. Okay. I don't. I don't think I added op parse applicative applicative to the build file, but I did. Did I spell it wrong? Perhaps I mean options dot applicative. I copied this from somewhere. I bet it is options dot applicative. Okay, and here's a, seems like a valid type error. Okay. All right, so let's find an out parse applicative tutorial. Hey, how about quick start? So this has ops, ops. Oh, sorry, I missed this. So ops is going to be info, but where, what is info? Yeah. No, I don't want that. So this is saying that this is info of, I'm not sure what this um, infix operator is doing, but basically this is a description of the help, um, the help stuff. Is there a simpler way to, to do it? I think I asked Bard to generate a, an example. I don't know if it was actually valid. So it does seem to want this info thing. Okay, so I'll just try this info thing. Before we can run a parser, we need to wrap it in a parser info structure that specifies a number of properties that only apply to top-level parsers, such as a header describing what the program does to be displayed in the help screen. 
So we need to wrap it into a parser info structure. And the parser info is going to say things that only apply to top level parsers, including the header. So uh, I guess that info is some function here. I said this, we saw this in the quick start. Okay. So we'll copy this. So sample, I think, is the name of their. I copied sample too. No, I didn't want to do that. Um, this is a function called sample. And then this is the data called capital T sample. And function sample is a parser of sample. So I think I'm going to call this arg parser. Maybe that's not a cool convention, but that's how I'm going to do it. And the arg parser, I don't know what um, this star star helper thing is. So I don't know if helper is defined anywhere here. Is helper a function? One thing that would be nicer in Haskell is to know if a function is coming from another, um, another package, it would be really nice to know, to be able to see that in the syntax in some way. I feel like that's one of the more confusing aspects of, um, of Haskell. All right, all right, so helper, is helper here? Well, let's see what, what it will say if I just try this. Say, program description is do some things, you know, and then header. I say that. Okay, so like that. So whatever helper is, it comes from somewhere. I, I didn't find it. It's just a mystery. It should show up in this. Um, if it come, if it comes from opt parse apl applicative, I would hope it shows up in the documentation somewhere. So maybe that wasn't the right documentation. Is this the right place to be? The helper parser that we added creates a dummy help option that displays the help text. Okay. Fine. So we'll do Basil run of the back end. I should already have this command, right? Or is it called Lecter Server? That's kind of a silly name. Let's call it Server. And of course, we have to start compiling from scratch. So while it's doing that, I mean, I guess I could ask it to run from here, but I'm not sure that's going to be any faster. Yeah, okay. Only one thing can run at a time. So they share the same Basil instance, but somehow they don't um, they don't share the same caching behavior, which is not not fun. Okay, so while that's waiting, backend selector. Okay. Well, at least it compiles and um, we've got this connection string. So once we have the connection, str connection string, we should be able to do with it, do something with it. Um, so we get these.
ops. Or rather, we get this connection string here. Right now, I'm just writing it to, to the terminal. What I really want to do is um, execute stuff. I'm not sure actually which one is, is the right one. There are two. From Haskellari and LP Smith. Does one clone the other? One has more stars. Okay. I'll just assume this one's reasonable. And so I think they had a test about how to connect six years ago. Is that right? Eight years ago, three years ago. Three months ago. This seems like the place to be. So you give post connect PostgreSQL a connection string. This has this bracket thing. I think I don't necessarily need it. So I'm going to just try um, connect Postgres. PostgreSQL. And then try to do a, a query. And what query do I want to do? I think do I just do execute underscore with the connection? So let's have this. And then we'll call execute with just some string. That'll do the query. I forget what my work queue is called, but let's just assume it's something like that. And then what will happen? Will that print anything? I don't think that will necessarily print something. But that should return a result. And do we get any other examples? What is common? So we need some way of iterating over the results or something like that, right? This would be one place where it would be useful to have the, I guess, GHCI integration which I think in theory, um, the, the rules Haskell Basel rules does have, but I'm not sure that it will work. Um, it, given my, given the, wait, did I change the rules? I don't think I, maybe it will work. I didn't alter rules Haskell, but it might not work with, with gRPC as a dependency. So here's a connect statement. Select generate series, blah, blah, blah. It's going to grab an only A and do some stuff using this for each. For each and then passing in a connection. Is this part of, is for each underscore a part of uh, PostgreSQL simple? There should be some, um, like hackage, um, description of this, right? Like a standard Haskell doc. I believe that's a thing that exists. Would it be in cursors? No. But this seems to be like a package. This seems to be the place to be. Can I search? 
Can I go to this root? Kind of. Use an index. Here we go. For each underscore, takes a from row, or I guess maybe, I don't know how this is read, like in the context of where R is a from row thingy, um, it takes a connection and a query, and it gives you um, something that turns the R into an IO, which is a result consumer, or maybe you pass in the result consumer. What do they do here? Oh, yeah, so they pass it in this Lambda thing. We're just going to call write IO ref, I guess. Is that the thing that's going to um, write to the, it's going to cause IO to happen. Okay. And then it's going to, and then what, and then this for each will do IO. So let's try that. But first let's see if the, uh, this thing ran. Yeah. Okay. So it tells me I'm missing the connection string. Cool. Let's comment out more code. Verify that things build. Verify that things don't build, I mean. It's trying to run it because I told it to run it, but I meant to tell it to build it again. Oh Lord, it's starting from the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to have to, um, I think I, it's not going to be long <laughs> before I feel like I, I need to make changes to the, um, to, to the stuff, to, to the way that, that Fools Haskell, I think is figuring out what needs to be recompiled. Okay. Um, what can I do while this is trying to do work? Oh man, it's not recompiling. It's like recompiling protobuf and everything. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so clearly I can't switch to the between the terminal and Emacs until until whatever whatever bug this is is fixed. Okay, so while that's going, let me at least try to remember what the um what I called my work queue. Tables, task queue. Okay. There should be nothing in the task queue. Is there like a better, um, is there like a generic described table SQL statement? I know there are specific ones for each, um, for like each database. I'm not sure this is a real thing. Okay. And so maybe while we're waiting, let's write some SQL queries. In theory, I could write the queries, um, using this, um, this kind of like special purpose syntax that's defined by, uh, by PostgreSQL simple, the Haskell library. However, I'm not sure how generic that syntax is, and I'm reluctant to pepper it throughout the, the code base until I am sure that I like this library. Maybe I'll start with just ordinary strings. And what do I need to do? I need to like insert a task into the database. So 
Do I get the... Okay, so the columns are a job ID, a job proto, um, which is going to be serialized into JSON, a status, and um, I guess the number of, number of failures when it was created, and retry after and update it at. I feel like I haven't figured out the right view for um, for D Beaver. What if I unclick auto? Because none of the views I'm getting seem like germane to what I want <laughs> to what I want to see. Okay. So how did I define status type? It had this like pending thing. And where do enums live? Policies, rules, triggers, warn tables, views. That's columns, constraints, foreign keys. I don't think there are any indexes that I've defined, dependencies, references. Okay, so maybe I'll just open up the file that had the SQL in it. And uh, maybe I'll ask Bard to to write this for me, so I don't have to fuss about the like enumeration syntax and stuff. If Bard is still around after closing it. So given this database, write a query that inserts a new, what am I calling a task? New task. I guess I don't have to insert the pending status because that's the default, right? And big serial maybe should have been like auto increment, but maybe that's handled automatically. I don't know. New task with just say a new task. Oops. Stop generating. All right. Well, compilation is finally finished. And now we're on this task. So let me finish this up a little bit and then I'll get back to editing. I'll just have this be a raw string. This dollar sign thing doesn't make any sense, but I will do, what if I just do the empty string? Does that count as a JSON BP? I don't think it does. And then my next question is in PostgreSQL, how do you do timestamps? For example, were there an auto incrementing ID column and a timestamp column T that defaulted to the present time for the sales table, then the following query would insert two new sales records and also return their new IDs and timestamps. I guess UTC time is the type that it wants for 
the for the timestamps. But this raises a good question about whether uh, the the timestamp should be should default to now, right? And the um, retry after doesn't um, doesn't need a default. I guess it does. So let me ask, I guess, um, Bard and say, can you alter this um, create table statement so that you created that? How about, can you alter my, the created column um, has a default value of now. And is that what I want? Default current comes that. Okay. So I'll ask, is this, um, is this a good, is default current timestamp a good default? I will call it if I as I'll say um if I understand correctly. That will cause the um the server to choose the timestamp. So that will cause the, the, the timestamp to reflect when the server wrote the data and not when the client set, sent the data. Is that usually the preferred convention? Depends on your specific application. The good practice is to store the time at which data is created in the database, as this can be useful for auditing and tracking. However, there are some use cases, use cases where you may want to store the time at which the data was sent from the client. For example, for real time chat, for real time chat. Another example is building a system that needs to be able to process data offline. In this case, you may want to store the time at which the data was sent from the client, so you can process the data in order in the order in which it was received. Okay, so I guess default timestamp is fine by me. Default, what is it? Default current timestamp. Whoa, whoa. And then my next question is, um, in the last column, in the updated at column, I'd like the default to be, let's say, 10 minutes after current timestamp. Can I write this, can I express this default as a SQL um, in the create table statement? Okay. One workaround is to trigger it is to trigger to update the updated column whenever a row is inserted or updated. So 
So create a trigger, updated at trigger before, okay. New updated at is current timestamp plus interval 10 minutes. Okay. Maybe instead of retry after um, with a timestamp, I will do, um, I can make retry after be an integer with probably a small int is fine. And it will be the number of seconds. Um, after created at, maybe defaulting to a thousand seconds. Who knows? Okay, so I'll say number. What is a comment in SQL syntax? Well, maybe that's. Ordering unreasonable. And let's see if I can um, have the beaver torch my old database and replace it with this one. And now I think I have to reload something or something. Refresh. And now we have retry after is an int two. Okay. And then um, before insert or update on. Task queue for each row execute procedure update updated at. Let's see if this is a, I assume this is a common thing. Automatically updating a timestamp column in PostgreSQL using triggers. Let's see if this works. Did it succeed? There's no transaction in progress. All right, so it seems like that failed. I'm not sure why it failed, but let me look again at the statement. We're creating trigger and then
this create trigger on or update on user task for each row. That looks the same. Or insert for each row. Execute procedure and then the name of the procedure uh, with the uh, parentheses semicolon. And then do I just need do I need a return statement? And this one uses now. With uh, whereas this one uses current timestamp. I'm not sure which one is more important. There is no transaction in process. So what? Can I just create the procedure? What about now? So do I have a, let's see. I'm not sure where procedures are supposed to show up here. Maybe under functions. Why is it showing me updated row zero? Oh, does this have to be as part of a larger statement? So they start by creating a table. Yeah, then we create the function. Next step is to create uh, this block of code to define our own blah, blah, blah. So what's the difference between a procedure and a function? Maybe this should be create function. Syntax error. All right, well, I guess it doesn't want me to do this. I feel like dbeaver is not is not helping me out. Maybe I'll just switch to the command line. So let's see what Postgres itself says. Create function name and some stuff. Do we get an example? Okay, I'll have to come back to this. I guess uh, this isn't so material for what I need, but I, now that I refresh it, let me just verify that there's actually no trigger at this point. Yeah, okay. Cool. 
I think I think I might abandon the beaver. And I guess I'll comment this out just to remind myself I haven't um, done anything with it. All right, back to the Haskell code. Um, okay, so we've got this connection. Let's see if we can. I think I need some do notation here. And then I probably need to um, do something with this result or I'll get a comp compilation error. But let's just try uh, compiling it anyway. Oh, first of all. Variable, not in scope. So somehow I need to get this execute thing like imported. I guess I have to import um, whatever the import statement for PostgreSQL simple is. Database dot postgresql dot simple. Whoops. I meant to copy it, not to go to it as a link. Perhaps I do mean that with all things capitalized. Couldn't match type car with byte strings, byte string, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the connect PostgreSQL um, connection string needs to be a byte string. And right now, opt parse Applicative is giving it to me as a string. So, is there a way I can ask for a byte string? Up parse applicative, parse a byte string instead of a string. Yes, opt parse applicative can parse a byte string instead of a string. To do this, you can use the stroption function with the auto reader. The auto reader. We'll use the read type class to parse the byte string into the appropriate type. Hey, look, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Did I tell it about my database or is it just referring that? I must have told it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so where's the auto reader? Read byte string. Is this real? I'm not sure that's real. I'm sure you could, there's lots of things you can do. But it would be nicest if it just came to me as a byte string. I'd like to parse byte strings, byte strings from system posix and byte string get args instead of converting from string. It's not clear how this would work. It needed still need to be decoded and converted into a text data type string or possibly text. Since the API API is all string based, it doesn't seem like there's a way to improve. Oh, 
Okay. Instead of converting from string. All right. It says to use read byte string. Is there really a read byte string? So read byte string takes a byte string and returns in either a either byte string and then a tuple A or byte string. Parse the given byte string into a typed value and also return the unconsumed bytes. What's the conventional Haskell way to convert a string into a byte string? Here's, here's something about option stir broken for byte strings. So you're going to import data byte string. And you have some string option. And what? Okay, the message is a byte string. Bytes need encodings. I adopted an is string based stir because it was the easiest, most portable way of giving people lazy and strict text readers without depending on the text library itself. So it has its own string thing. And then is this just the thing I was looking at before? Yeah. I guess there's just an encode function. Does it need an encoding? I'm not convinced that this is the reality, but let's try it. Maybe something like that, maybe? I need to add it to my build file for sure, and maybe also add it to the workspace. It's in the workspace. Okay, so put string line is now ambiguous, I guess, because byte string defines its own. So I'll say when I try that, I get variable not in scope. Oh, okay. So that's that's my fault. So encode needs encode thinks I want to take an I/O connection to an I/O connection, and that's not actually what I want. What I want is a, to take a byte string to a string. So this, I put it in the wrong place. Um, I'll just call it connection byte string.
Maybe do let. Okay, so now it understands that encode is supposed to be from string the byte string, but it doesn't have the um, it doesn't have the it can't find the symbol. Presumably, I need to either prefix it with um, with the fact that it comes from the byte string library, or like import it, um, add it to the import statement. But I want to ask. Bard, what it thinks I should do. It's claiming this will run without errors, which I don't think it will. So let's try it. Let's try the, the wide internet by string Haskell in code. Actually, it's, where's chat GPT? What's the idiom idiomatic way to convert a Haskell Thematic way in Haskell. Whoa, whoa. To convert a byte string to a, well, the reverse, convert a string to a byte string. Do I really have to call car eight pack? I know that I can do that, but I really, it seems a bit ugly. Most common are stir, which is used for string types. Readers. Okay. Bard told me I could use a reader. Auto. Auto will take something that uh, is read A and return a read M of A. A reader is used by the option and argument builders to parse the data passed by the user on the command line it into the data into a data type okay can i see examples either reader the bard maybe bard was right about auto I don't think read byte string is.
is it is a real thing i guess that um Let's try searching on source graph again. So this allows text. They, they, they seem to have support for it. So auto is an either either reader. That either I guess returns are or it says it can't parse. But I'm not sure that I see examples. Are there examples? Help builder not empty types extras. Help. Is there no? It's just the one directory. How about examples? Alternatives, cabal commands, formatting, hello. But none of these seem to have byte string examples. What if we just search for auto? A regular option can return an object of any type and takes a reader parameter, which specifies how the reader should be parsed. A common reader is auto, which requires a read instance for the return type and uses it to parse its argument. We'll change this from string to byte string. And then auto goes somewhere. Maybe. Like that. And code is not in scope. I think I don't need any more. It doesn't like what? I'm got in int sixty fours. Okay, so this uh the select statement is returning some I guess int sixty fours. And what if I just do something like this? Can I do like throw away the result? Okay, so it uh, compiles now with the byte string thing. That's very positive. Let's see if I can um, try to iterate over this thing.
I'm doing for each. Um, I think the last thing I need to, to pass in is a function. I don't think I can just print stuff out, but I guess I might as well try. It seems to uh, actually kind of like that. Are you sure? What if I introduce an error intentionally? This should fail, right? Okay. All right, so whatever this is, this seems to type check. Uh, but when we run it, we're not gonna get anything back because there's nothing in the database. Only a single target can be run. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Fair enough. I can't run an entire directory. Okay, and so I ran it in a way that's missing the connection string. I don't actually know how to run it with, um, in, in Basil mode, in Emacs. Like, I, I, I can't add a, um, command line argument. So let's, uh, let's make a default connection string. And just make sure we get the type right. So after we parse it, here we'll just pass the default and let's just silence all of the No, I don't think there's a convenient way to silence that. So I guess I'm going to have to run it from the command line unless there's a way to add an argument. Basil build, Basil build mode, build a fire, ignore, compile current, Basil mode, coverage test, Basil RC, Basil run. Is there like run with... See the manual for details. Is there anything about arguments? Support Basil args and run commands. Yeah. Being able to pass arguments run under five days ago. This must have come up before. Support command Basil configure does not automatically highlight. Only six closed issues. All right, so for whatever reason, Emacs Basil mode doesn't want to support, doesn't yet support our arguments. I'm sure they want to. The internal one does, but um, this one doesn't. So. What do I need my string to be called? Connection. We'll just have a simple. Uh, 
a, um, a simple string. And this is going to take forever to build and load. And what can I do in the meantime? Isn't there a user option? All right, whatever. Um, I forget how to. Okay, so we get empty rows and what else can I check? So I wanted to see if that, um, I could create a function till compiling. Let us create procedure thing. Yeah. Okay. So we still, we get the, still get the syntax error. Um, begin and I'll ask Bard to tell me what's wrong with this. Are you sure? This one here. There's very much a semicolon after return new. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll say, can you try find the syntax error? Okay. So, Bard. Tells me it can't find a syntax error. At or near new. I mean, maybe new is just not defined. Returns trigger as. Everything you need to know about PostgreSQL triggers.
Do I not? Do, uh, let's see. Create procedure. Language. Do I need to say what the language is? To be able to define a procedure, the user must have the usage privilege on the language. What are the languages? Language SQL. Okay. What if we just ask, um, create a PostgreSQL trigger that updates the updated at column with the current timestamp whenever the column is modified or initialized. This is basically the same thing, except it has this language um, thingamajig at the end. So is that the, is that what I need? Wait, I can't just add it like that? Okay. And it may want now instead of current timestamp. Oh, I need to, I guess I need to return trigger as, so let's just try grabbing this wholesale. So if I do that, I get the um, no transaction in process error. Okay, but that succeeded. Okay, so I must have been in a bad state when I tried it the first time. Okay, so that seems to be a valid statement. And then um, whatever this does before insert or update on your table for each row. Yeah. And then my table is what? Task queue, underscore queue. Task queue. What, what, what? Okay, that seems to have made progress. And it cannot parse value few. Ooh, that's because it's not a real, not a real string. But um, shouldn't it be able to parse foo into a string, to a byte string? Oh, the connection can't parse it. Great. So, will dbeaver give me my connection string? Let's see. Here's the connection. Add a connection. Connection view. Copy.
I'm convinced that there's a way to um, make it give you the connection string. I don't want to import. Copying the folder. What? I like there to be a display of the connection string. I've considered going to MySQL or Pomelite, but they don't offer a front of UI. Its template is available under the driver settings. Does it solve your problems? URI template. If you go to properties, I guess it has it. Let's try it. How did I get the properties? Window, something view, share view properties. No connections. Really? Really? Maybe somewhere else under show view. Database navigator, error log. Project Explorer, Query Manager, Database Browser, Templates, oh, maybe I need to open up properties and then select something else over here. Yeah, maybe that's it. There we go. Not pa parse value. Why not? Doesn't that seem like exactly the sort of thing you should be able to parse? Let's change this connection here just to something that we know is not, is being ignored. Yes, ignored. Okay, so, all right, so it is um, failing to parse 
from the from the opt parse stuff. So why can't it parse? Oh, is it because I said it was a long? No, long should be the name of the like a long argument, the name of the argument. So uh, why can't it be? So instead of option auto, what was it option string? Let's see if we just Google the error message. Cannot parse value. Okay. They have this um, parser, which has an auto. Option auto uses the read instance, which wants text delimited by double quotes. There is string option for text like values. What? Which wants text delimited by double quotes. What is not delimited by double quotes here? Getting this as a runtime error, I've iterated through a dozen or so variations. Getting compile time errors when expected, reasonable, and compiling fine when I have the types line up. Runtime error only when it's compiled. Opt parcel applicative lets you get through the type that it can't handle at runtime. Yeah, I don't know. Opt parse applicative. It doesn't seem like you're uh, you're doing what you're supposed to do. But I imagine I'm using it incorrectly somehow. So we have the option auto with connection and connection string, which is a byte string. Let's try Bing. Option auto seems like a kludge since read is supposed to be an inverse to show, and I'd like to keep the derived instance show binary files. It might seem like a kludge. Use string instead of auto. Um, well, I guess that the, uh, that, the command line parsing is not really essential to this operation. What if I just call, we just get rid of all of this stuff and do this. Okay, now at least we get failed to connect to server. Now we're making progress. Um, but you should have my password in this string. 
I just need to add it somewhere, right? So and it's like at user colon whatever. Let's stop passing it an argument just so we're clear on the fact that it doesn't actually require them now. And so I think like user at password, user colon password at is probably uh, close to the syntax. Yeah, okay. So my password should be hunter2, which is the greatest and most secure password. Okay, so it seems to have maybe gotten a result and returned some stuff. So maybe let's try inserting into the, the database some, some thingies. And I guess if we're gonna do that, we might as well test this um, insert statement that I was writing. Insert into task queue. I don't, I don't think I can do this, but oops, I know I can't do that. I'm assuming that empty string is not actually a JSON, a valid JSON BB, but, but, um, zero length delimited identifier at or near. So how do I generate a JSON BB? Not, not, is it JSON BB or just JSON B? got this JSON build object. Is that a thing? Is it called JSON build object?
Maybe there's no convenient way to do this in like a couple of minutes. What if I just do JSON build object of the empty list? The objects, the arguments of JSON build object must consist of alternating keys and values. That's useful context. Oh, I think maybe, um, let's read the docs on JSON B object, JSON build object. Uh, variadic any builds a JSON object out of the variadic, variadic argument list. By convention, the argument consists of alternating keys and values. Key arguments are coerced to text. Value arguments are converted as per to JSON or to JSON B. To JSON B of any element returns to JSON B. Okay. Can I do to JSON B of the empty string? not determine polymorphic type because input has type unknown. So does there have to be a, a, a table that stores my JSON bytes? I'm not sure I understand what's going on here. That are available for constructing JSON B. So let's go back to the top. Postgres, JSON B. Provide native support for JSON data types. Within the SQL environment, PostgreSQL implements the SQL JSON data model. This model comprises sequences of items. Each item can hold SQL scalar values with an additional SQL JSON null value and composite data structures that use JSON arrays and objects. It's a formalization of the implied data model and the JSON specification. RC7159. It allows you to handle JSON data along with regular SQL data with transaction support, including uploading JSON data into the database and storing, storing it in regular SQL columns as character or binary strings. That's what I thought I was doing. Generating JSON objects and arrays from relational data, querying JSON data using SQL JSON query functions. Let's try asking, um, let's try asking Bard what the syntax is. Given this database, how do I um, insert a
a new task using the default values everywhere it's possible. So it should already have the database schema. Hopefully it remembers what it is. Values default, but there's no default. Um, So what, are, what is it doing that I'm not? Oh, it just wants a string? That can't be right. Can't be right. Oh, okay, that was right. That ended up being easy. Okay. Oh, what? What? This is insert zero one. Oh, I went select from task queue. Okay, great. Now I have two um, two tasks, and hopefully I should be able to uh, maybe do something with them. Ideally, see them when I run this. Incompatible error SQL type. Int eight error SQL table OID. Our message. So I think that this is um, objecting to the way that I'm printing things out. So maybe um, maybe I could just grab one thing. Maybe I'll just try to grab the status. How do I do that? I don't know. So I've got this um, for each. So let's close a bunch of this stuff. And let's see if we can find for each. So for each connect, connect oh, for each connection, um, it's going to take an only A. And then I think A is supposed to be typed. But it's returning. Uh, yeah, so let me just change the select statement to return. Is this index here? So after here, we'll call this only X. So hopefully something, what? what? Status T. Oh, okay. So the status is a um, is not text. It's the my. It's like the status enum type. What if we? What about the job proto? Is the job proto something that I can print? But it seems to be making a connection because it. I think it figured out somehow that the um, the about the status type. Okay, and it doesn't know how to print JSON B. That's fine. Can I print anything out? How about create it at? I would like to get some sort of successful printing. What if I add show?
ambiguous type variable arriving from the use of show. Oh, what do these people do? They do all this ref stuff. Can you show a Jason B? Oh, okay, I think that the um, the objection is that I'm trying to push show somehow under the the only. And I'm not sure what the right. Not sure what the right solution is. But at least I seem to be getting getting back something um, from the database. Just emotionally, I would like to be able to print um, print a successful result. What about the ID? I, so the ID seems to be, is probably a column that um, is reasonable. Do I still have show here? Let me remove show. So we get types incompatible with the um, just of OID 24. Can I do this? Only just X? I think that this, that's not going to compile. So am I getting back a maybe or am I getting back a distant only? The SQL table OID is just OID two, four, whatever. The SQL field is ID. Let's see if we can um, look for incompatible. Did I close my other source graph window?
Convergence of SQL values to Haskell values is somewhat permissive. When Merrick types any Haskell type that can accurately represent all values of the given PostgreSQL type is considered compatible. For example, you can always extract the PostgreSQL 16-bit small int column to a Haskell int. PostgreSQL 64-bit big int column. And if, if a numeric incompatibility is found, we'll get a result error. Specify that a query returns a single column result, use the only type. The query and query underscore function return a list of values in the from row type class. This class performs automatic extraction and type conversion of rows from a query result. So this is giving a query on a uh, name, a, and age from users. And it's taking the name and age, calling text unpack on name. And it's calling show of age as an int. So can I give it um, can I tell it x is a an int? Match typo with actual type int. Oh, I need show, right? <laughs> okay, great. Finally, finally, finally. Um, just out of curiosity now, can we do, what is it, job proto? What am I in God mode? Yeah, okay, job proto. Let's say that this is gonna be a text. I'm guessing you, you can't actually do that. Not in scope, constructor or class text. Can you do it as a string? Okay, let's see if this is anything at all about Jason B. Do some type info. Do we know what it can be converted into? It's typoid, typoid is Jason B ID. Type category is U. What is type category? What? Oh, tip category with no E? I guess I should, should have just clicked on it. The tip category is in uh, just a character. But what makes a tip category U? Does you and me? Does you mean unpack?
Let's write it as a byte string. Gen type info.hs. Whatever gen type info is. Query is a PostgreSQL database for the object IDs and other type information associated with type names. It generates a module with data constants representing part of the PG type table. Note that only some of the built-in types have stable type IDs. Okay, well, I guess I don't, that's not gonna necessarily help me. From a field JSON byte string, Turns a conversion byte string. I'm guessing this means conversion to byte string. Parse a field to a JSON value. It seems like this should work. There seems to be support for converting JSON B to byte strings. So they throw it into text. So maybe I just need to import text. But I don't really know where to import it from. Data.text. And I'll need to add it to the build file. Probably already in the workspace file, I would guess. Yeah. Oh. I don't know why it doesn't. Um... It seems like it would work. If doing select JSON B, whatever test object is. And they, I think um, whatever a positive query is, I'm guessing they're doing some sort of comparison with this result as text. Let's try just doing PostgreSQL simple. That's cool. PostgreSQL symbol and JSON B. And you got to put everything in quotes or DuckDuckGo will ignore it. How to retrieve a JSON B value with PostgreSQL symbol. Should be value, not an object.
So they do some JSON example from cluster, but they don't like print it out or anything. Right. Maybe there's something in from field that will tell me about what I'm supposed to do. From field is a type class. It's got some conversions. So this is checking some type ID. Otherwise, it's going to do some unpacking. There should be some type. Um, I figure what the JSON B ID is. JSON B ID. I don't know why I keep spelling JSON wrong. Okay, so we've got this JSON BOID in from field JSON by string. Should take the field and a maybe byte string and return a conversion byte string. So first it looks at the type and maybe is it incompatible. And if the maybe byte string is an instance of just a byte string, then it, you should get a pure byte string back. But I don't know if the issue, the issue is that this is a maybe. Is the issue that this is a maybe? Do I have to do case matching? Maybe something like this. Just to check the type of show is from A to string. What have I done wrong? It's going to take a minute. Oh, whoops. There's extra things there. So, so it can't my, match maybe by string with the actual type text. Well, that's because I told it was text, but it's really not. I just tell it it's a maybe byte string.
I'd like to fig I'd like to figure this out before I go. I'm not convinced that I'm gonna be able to do so though. It's kind of, it, it thinks the Haskell type is byte string. And doesn't think it's maybe byte string. So it's failing before, um, you know, it's failing in, I guess, when it's trying to do the automatic conversion, I assume. What if I grab this? No ID. because it doesn't like that. It'd be nice if there are examples. There are like a few examples that you can try to infer from the tests. So based on this, it seems like it's the automatic conversion that's failing. And we pulled up the conversion, I think, what I think is the conversion thing. So it's going to take a field, although it should be row. Shouldn't it be from row instead of from field? From row. So maybe there is no from, from row. Okay, so from, mm, if A is a from field, you get a from row of only A by applying only to the field. And you get a from, uh, a from row of maybe only A by doing this thing, whatever that is, some stuff with here or nothing. What if instead of only I just have X? So now I get a different error. No instance for from row byte string. It could be an only A. Could be, I guess, some sort of tuple. Could be a maybe of a list plus 40 others. Let's try maybe only A. Let's just try maybe X.
So I need a from row that is maybe of something. And from row can be in only A. So I think what only is doing is just picking out a, a singleton um, thingy. I tried this, right? Singleton tuple, I guess, essentially. So from row really just kind of delegates the from field. The from field should take a maybe byte string and return a conversion to byte string. So why is it failing? If the type of the field is not equal to the JSON OID Oh this is JSON byte string not JSON B Here here we have JSON B though from field of F and BS is equal to parse byte string of this thing but it's comparing it to the JSON OID. Okay, and type is not equal to JSON B OID. Then we're gonna return incompatible. So doesn't this have to be the, the thing? The thing that's causing the incompatibility? So why would this type comparison fail? So it says return error incompatible F, where F is the field, and then the empty string, and the empty string is supposed to think that be the thing that contains the error SQL type. which it correctly recognizes somehow in the return value that it's supposed to be JSON B. This is error Haskell type is byte string. Where does the Haskell type come from? So we have the field, but where is MBS in the return error? So given the constructors from result error, the field in an error message, this fills the other fields in the exception value. So we're getting the type name of F and then we pass in the table ID of F. We unpack the name of F and show the type of, et cetera. So all the, I guess F contains all of the things that we need to fill out the error. Stop the, stop the hovers, stop the hovers, man. All right. Um, except that 
it's comparing the wrong thing, right? So it thinks the error Haskell type is byte string. Is that because I told it was it was a byte string? What if I tell it it's a potato? Yeah, so it thinks it's an int. Didn't I try maybe byte string? So for whatever reason, even if I say it's a maybe byte string, it uh, compares to byte string. Is that desired? So this thing, If you can find references. Implementations zero, references four. Do we have any issues? Seems like no one wants to use it with Jason B. How to read Jason? Short answer is to make a new type and use um, from Jason field. So it seems like I need to do extra work as of 2022. Okay. Um, that's fine. I'm not doing that now. But we were able to get some something printed out, right? The ID worked. I think as an int. And then for the other fancy things like the enums and the, um, for other fancy things like the enums and the JSON B, we may have to do more work, I guess, juggling around JSON. It would be nicer. Um, I guess what I'm, my concern is like as a, as a developer, uh, the, um, like a simple question, like how do how do I read JSON is a is a bug report, and not something that's covered in any sort of documentation. So this is like the first thing that you um, this is like the first thing you encounter when you try when you try the library. So that makes me a little bit concerned that there's like a um, that um, if this isn't really covered, there may be like a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to run into that that isn't really covered. And then the question becomes, is there an alternative library that's a little bit more mature or, or better documented? Um, or am I better off kind of like trying to roll my own thing? Or should I really persist and in, in try to figure out how to use um, how to use this PostgreSQL simple library by just reading the code? And I'm not sure yet, but I'll figure that out. That's all for me now. Thanks for watching. So now we're starting the silent stream I did earlier in the day.